All right, hello interior H coast families. This is gonna be my November grad advising update. It's been a little while. Sorry that one didn't come out in October. We've been, someone in our family has been basically sick for pretty much the last month, it seems like. Um, I'm sure you guys have probably been hit by a few bugs as well, um, if you live in BC. So that's been tricky to manage. I've also been uh, traveling for a bunch of uh, work conferences, which have been awesome. Uh, but those are all done for the year, so I'm pretty pumped about that. And I have an update for you. We're gonna go over a couple different things. I'll try to go through quickly. So let's jump right in. I want to ask as my opener, um, do you have a rhythm yet with homeschooling? Um, you know, how is your weekly schedule looking? And what does your time management um, look like as well? If you are finding that the school year is not working out in the best way um, right now, I do want to just let you guys know that I do have office hours throughout the week. Um, these are my set office hours. So I have Zoom open and my email open at the same time during these hours. And if you email me wanting to meet, um, I'll send you my Zoom link right here. Um, or you can add me as a Zoom contact and we can message through Zoom. But these are open office hours. I will also meet with you guys outside of these hours, absolutely based on your schedule. Um, if we need to go old school, I can give you a call on the phone um, and help you guys with trying to figure out a way to manage your year. Um, that's definitely one of my uh, roles here as your grant advisor. So meeting throughout the week, I wanna be available. Thursdays is the only day I'm really not available because I do teach one day a week in person. Uh, which is really fun. So that's what I want to start with. Um, if you're finding a, a bumpy start, right now it's November 21st, so we've had September. Most school, like there's a, a couple weeks of like intro and everything, but by basically by September 21st, you should be, you know, starting lessons. And so it's two months from that point now, and there should be progress made. So next point, November assessments um, are done. This is the month for uh, provincial assessments. There are three assessments required to graduate, two in grade 10, one in grade 12. So if you are a grade 11 student and you haven't written your grade 10 assessments, I definitely am urging you to write as soon as you can, like in January, um, although April or June works, but sooner than, than later because those should be written in grade 10. For all of you guys in grade 10, I would be recommending to write in April or June, um, you know, to go through a little bit of grade 10 to, to kind of help with that. Um, I do not book these. We actually have someone hired um, specifically to schedule these because it is a logistical nightmare when our students are in every single school district across BC. So we will find a place for you to write and you might have to drive a little bit um, but assessments are done for November and now there's three other times that will um, be bookable and those will, you should get an email I believe from Gord Robidoux and or Chelsea Bickgood. Um, so Gord Robidoux is actually the one who's scheduling them at schools. So you should get emails from him. You sign up for them and register them through, in, through a link. Um, so those are required to graduate uh, and you can do them at some point. Parents, this one's for you. Now is the time to check in on a student's progress. So I took a screenshot here um, of a parent's view um, for NCOM, and um, what you will want to be doing is clicking on the online course progress button. So we are roughly 25% through the school year in its entirety for the linear courses and 50% through semester one. So if you're looking at the progress and the progress is 10% or you know 30% for maybe a semester one course, that is tough. Um, that means that you're behind. 
and it's really important to know that you're behind to be able to set up the rest of the school year properly to mitigate that. So this is where parents check in on all classes to see where they're at. Some classes will not show progress and so I would just directly email the teacher in those cases but most of them will have them. All right so maybe um, you know it's off to a bumpy start and students are behind. Now I got to plug the student support center, um, our SSC. So I really am happy to hear that families are using this. I've, I've had a number of messages from the, the two EAs um, that most frequently get used and they are Taryn and Carly. So the Student Support Center, there's three EAs. Um, they're all free to use, they're all amazing. And they have bookable links. So if you take a look at Taryn, um, her she looks like she's booking into 29th, 30th, so she's pretty full right now. Uh, let's take a look at Carly's. Um, Carly is available tomorrow. That's awesome. So she's got availability this week. What you do is you click on the day um, that works for you. She's got a morning and three afternoon sessions. If those don't work, you can go to the next day. Um, tons of um, time to fill up here. So they are free to use. Carly and Taryn can both help with all sorts of literacy and scheduling situations you might find yourself in. So um, if you have an essay that you've written and you've gotten a low mark on, you can bring that to them and they can walk you through maybe ways to upgrade it. Um, or you can bring in an assignment that you're currently working on and just get support with that. Um, so definitely a ton of academic help, but then also just like life management, like they'll both, oops, they'll both help you like create a schedule, um, a daily schedule for what your school could look like and set goals and all that kind of stuff. So that's awesome. Ben um, is also a numeracy and science EA. So he helps with all sorts of math stuff. So if you're stuck in a math lesson, um, he can help with anything. He's awesome and you can book him as well. So I really wanna kinda stress the importance of these guys because they are great to use and they meet through Zoom and can walk you through, through screen sharing, um, how to do something that, you're, that you need help with. I'm also going to say you book now, you meet with them, repeat. So book now, meet, repeat. Um, once you've met with them once, um, I really recommend meeting again in like a couple weeks or a month because they'll be able to help you with the next thing that you're working on. Um, I find that students who meet with them regularly can check in and once you've like met with them a couple times especially, then you can bring a, a few things that you're working on. Like maybe you're working on a Christian studies um, journal reflection, you're working on an essay in English, you know, and you're also finding that you're, you, don't, you don't have like good time management. Then you can tackle all three things in your meeting. So the Student Support Center is awesome. They're free to help. I'm also free to help, but in a different capacity. So come and meet with us. Um, there you go. Scholarships. Um, for those of you in grade 11 and grade 12, grade 12 especially, you might be curious about scholarships. There are definitely um, scholarships out there um, that you can apply for. And information about that is gonna be coming out in January. So it's gonna be like a Zoom event that you'll be able to sign up for and um, and do. There's already workshops from last year that were recorded. Um, so on our grad program page, um, in post-secondary information, you can go into the scholarship section and the scholarship, there's two camps that they did last year. So camp one and camp two here. Was there a third? There's actually a third. Um, so you can go back and watch these and there's some really great information um, just in general that you could just be watching, you know, maybe while I don't know, doing some homework on the side, because um, there is some information in here that even though it's from last year, will still very much apply for you guys this year. 
Um, so scholarship information will be coming out. Um, and I don't go and look for scholarships for you, um, but I will help you fill them out once you've found one that that actually works for you. And if you guys are applying to like a specific university, um, I can help out with that as well. So the next thing is the grad planner. So when you are logged in to NCOM, um, I showed you before that you should be checking the online course progress parents. Um, but both parents and students can click on to the see more items um, in this bottom left corner. And then you will see this big graduation planner. So if you are wanting to look at um, credits and um, like figuring out how the credits work towards graduating, we now have a graduation planner, which is super helpful to use. I've set them up for students. And if you want to talk about credits, I am your guy. And uh, that would be awesome um, to do. If you want some help with that, I can just send you a screenshot of it. Uh, but I just want to let you know that there is a graduation planner. I'm using them to track credits for everyone, and they're awesome. And finally, I'm going to end with service awards. So students, if you are volunteering somewhere, um, you know, for lots of hours in your week, or maybe you're serving at church or at youth group or in some capacity, please let me know. That is awesome. And our school does have a number of student awards. Um, available. Some of them are just automatic based on taking Christian studies courses and scoring well, but others uh, we nominate for. So me personally, um, I've nominated students for a character award and they won it, which is really exciting. Um, so this is something that teachers fill out um, each year, but students um, you can actually fill out a service award form because I will probably not know all the different things that you're doing. So if you click on the service award form, it'll take you here and you got to throw in all your information, but it asks you to confirm what organization or like where you're, oops, where you're um, volunteering. Um, and then you can keep a log of what you're doing. So how many volunteer hours have you completed this year? And then there's a reflection here. So, um, you know, what's motivating you to, to choose this community service or volunteer activity? You know, if it's your parents forcing you to do it, that might not go over well. But you can write about what you really enjoy about that and, you know, what led you to serve or volunteer in the first place. Um, and then you can talk about, um, you know, how that's impacted you. So this is definitely something that I, I would love for as many of you to, to get. Um, it's not to be completed until like May 15th. But I want you guys to know about it now, because if you know about it now, you can be tracking hours, and at the end of the school year, you can fill this out, and you can get yourself a service award. And it is like a nice like award that gets um, sent to you. So there you go. That is basically all that I have for today. Um, it feels like the school year is both going like a very slow and very fast. I can't believe that it's already November 21st. But I mean, I've answered like 10 bajillion emails this year and um, seemingly the same amount of phone calls and Zoom calls. So I know that it, the, the days kind of seem long, but the fact that we're already at this point in the year is crazy. And people are already like setting up stuff for Christmas. Um, even like my Starbucks this morning um, with four shots of espresso was all Christmassy. Um, that's awesome. So it's just that season. If you live in the interior, I'm sure you've had tons of snow. I've shoveled a lot in my driveway. So I hope you guys are doing well. Please send me an email if need be. And thanks for watching. Take care, you guys.